So this is a handy little uh, Geiger counter, handheld Geiger counter. It's inexpensive. Uh, as it comes, however, you know, it, it has some limitations, but it's pretty good. Um, what I did, though, I think in an earlier video, I, I pointed out that it normally does not click. I added the click sound by uh, bypassing. So I basically took a resistor and I located the tran transistor that was driving the the uh, speaker for the alarm. And there's a little LED that will flash with every uh, event. And so I, I sucked a little current off of that to drive the speaker. And so it gives an audible click. However, that wouldn't come with the device as you buy it, okay? The other thing I did was these are calibrated against some average and it's not great at detecting alpha radiation because alpha radiation can be blocked uh, by distance and mass. And so the, the tube is behind this plastic case. So what I did was I simply drilled a bunch of holes in the plastic case. Now that kind of ruins any uh, calibration for, for energy, but it does dramatically improve the ability of the tube to detect alpha radiation. So in terms of just detecting counts per minute or events per unit time, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, it's just that you really don't, you wouldn't want to trust the uh, the energy calculations from this. But in terms of counts per minute, yeah, just fine. So this will now pick up uh, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Not equally well. Uh, you need some more sophisticated tools to do that. But uh, for these comparative purposes, I find it very well, interesting. Uh, I just wanted to do another demo uh, to basically highlight the the relatively in minuscule almost background radiation that you find in uranium glass this is a, a group of 30 uh, uranium glass marbles they're flat back marbles these are all vintage so they're from you know about the 1920s or so and each of these would be made into about four maybe even five cabochons so Pretty much, this entire cluster represents about 120 pieces, either a ring or a pendant. And of course, most people don't wear 120 pieces of anything at one time or for any length of time. And it, they, it has that absolutely beautiful uh, characteristic green glow to it. Um, pretty much, you know, it, it, it's just not possible for me to pick up or detect the radioactivity that's being emanated by just one cabochon that might be cut from one of these. Um, because it, it's going to be the accumulation dependent upon the mass. So in order to just get a, a sense, an idea of what we're looking at here, uh, I've got this cluster of 30 of these marbles. I then have a Fiesta Ware plate. Uh, this is from about 1930s, Homer Laughlin Company. They used uranium oxide uh, at, at sometimes at high concentrations in the uh, glaze to make this beautiful orangey red color. And uh, it, these can be considerably more radioactive than, than other things just because of the nature of the, of the ceramic glaze. Anyway, that gives you a good sort of a positive control as well as something that you can use to compare to. Um, it is significantly more radioactive than even this collection of 30 marbles. But even this, as scary as it's going to sound, is probably a million times less radioactive than something that you would be immediately concerned with. So, uh, you know, the, you want to take precautions with this stuff, but it's not it's not as bad as you might think in comparison to what is out there in the world. So let's just take a quick look at what we're looking at here. Now let's start with just getting a background reading. Again, this isn't an entirely fair background reading. It'll be a little high because it is in proximity to these other radioactive sources. But I want to I want to give a a sense of what you're looking at. So first we're going to take a, a background reading, then we'll read this, and then we'll read this and we'll see what they are in comparison. After that, I'd like to then in the second uh, sequence show you the, the composition. It, it's a very crude way to do it, but there are different types of radioactivity being emanated from these sources, alpha, beta, and gamma. 
And most of the uranium is radiating alpha waves or, or alpha, alpha radiation, which are actually particles, um, basically two helium nuclei that are being spit out uh, at, at high speed. Anyway, here's the background. You see that it does have peaks, you know, so it just occasionally gets something that shows up. So let's just take a quick look. I'll just put this right on top of the sensor. And you can see that it definitely is showing it. The, the group is definitely showing the presence of radioactive isotopes above background. Now, here's the thing about this. It might be two or even three times the background radiation. Now, that's four, the equivalent of 120 individual gems. But let's think, think, it, through, think it through for a minute. If it's already a very small number, then twice of a small number is still a very small number. So it's always about context and comparisons. So let's take a look then. Now we have background and we have uranium glass. Let's take a look at what the Fiesta wear plate will do for us. You'll notice, of course, that it's jumped up. This particular plate will stabilize at about almost 3,000 counts per minute. So that's 10 to 100 times more than what this does. So let's let it stabilize a little bit, give us a peek, and then I will pull it back off to let it calm down so you can see what's going on here. So now it's dropping back to background. See, so in comparison to something as simple as this ceramic plate, the radioactivity in these uranium glass things is about, it is very comparable to that that you find in naturally occurring potassium. Uh, maybe a little more than that, but uh, you, you may not realize it, but, but potassium which is an element common to, in, to all life forms. We, we concentrate it. All living cells concentrate potassium. And naturally, potassium contains an isotope called potassium-40. And potassium-40 is radioactive. It has an extra neutron in its nucleus. And so this is part of our makeup. We, we carry this around. You cannot escape it. So the idea is you don't want to add to it. Right, and so that's sensible, but I, I think it's it's really interesting and educational to consider uh, quantitative nature of comparative risking riskiness things, you know, risky things. So anyway, here's that plate compared to background. Notice when I pick this up, it's actually now the sensor is on the back here, and it started getting some radiation. So in the next sequence, I'm going to stop and start this over. Let's take a look at and see if we can separate out um, how much of different kinds of radiation is coming from these things, because different kinds of radiation also carry different levels of potential concern. Well, just to uh, do a very quick and dirty illustration of the uh, different types of radiation that might be emanating from something like a Fiesta wear plate. Uh, if you've got uranium in the mixture, uranium-238 has a half-life of four and a half billion years. So, you know, it takes a very long time for it to, to degrade. And uh, it, it in and of itself, in small concentrations, is not particularly dangerous. But of course, as the uranium breaks down and gives off radioactivity, um, it's turning into other compounds like like ra radium and uh, ultimately it will turn into lead but that means that depending on the age of the uranium source uh, of the oxide there could be uh, some additional uh, elements in, in vanishingly small amounts but some of those elements are more radioactive per per atom than is uranium so most of the um, radiation coming from this plate being uranium oxide should be in the in the nature of alpha particles these are helium nuclei a proton and a neutron there's actually a pair of them 
and they're they're ionizing you know they, they're damaging but they are so heavy that they will bump into stuff and they will dissipate after about oh six inches or so so uh, after about 10 to 15 centimeters there's very little energy in the alpha particles left and they can be stopped by things like paper and cardboard so uh, let's see uh, how much of the radiation in this is actually from alpha particles. So first let's remind ourselves what the uh, unvarnished radiation level is. This should stabilize at about 3,000 counts per minute for this particular plate. So we'll just let that go for a moment. Yeah, it's, it's hit about 29, so we'll Let's, let's let that calm back down to the background level. Very close to it. Won't take very long. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this uh, detector about six inches above the plate. Oops, let's see here. And clearly there there is still a fair amount of radioactivity. Now, it is nowhere near what it was when I was closer, right? It's about 500 counts per minute, um, which is not insignificant. That's about 10 times above background, but uh, that is significantly less than what it was uh, before. So let's see if we can confirm that that's probably the result of alpha particles by putting on a, a layer of about two, two and a half millimeters of paper and a, and a sheet of cardboard. That, that should give us about the same radiation level. Yeah, so, so most of this is evidently in the form of the, the alpha particles, which is what we expect. Okay, so let's put this over here. Now, um, there are beta and gamma particles potentially as well, and the beta particles are more energetic. They're electrons, and they can be stopped by a thin piece of aluminum foil or metal. So this is a piece of like 24 gauge copper, I think. So let's put that on there. And this should absorb both the alpha and the beta radiation. So what I want to see is if there's anything that's a remnant after we've sort of cut out uh, the alpha and the beta. And it turns out that there is a, it's, it's not a lot but there is a tiny amount that is above background. So background was about 60, and we're getting about 150, so about, about double background. And, and that might be um, trace, traces of gamma. Gamma particles are very high-energy photons uh, that can travel a long distance. So let's double-check and, and show you what, again, what the total radiation looks like out of one of these plates. Again, consistently it will be about 3,000 counts per minute on this particular detector. We'll let it calm down. So there you have it. Um, most of the radiation, as expected, is going to be from alpha particles. And again, compared to the Uranium glass, yeah, the uranium glass is, is essentially just barely above background.